Over the years, BMW has been responsible for some truly beautiful cars. At its best, BMW's design language is purposeful, but not showy. Eye-catching, yet understated. A great BMW just looks right. So, for its new iX, the ultra-luxury, range-topping electric flagship, the car that will set the tone for a generation of electric dimmers to come, you'd imagine that BMW has worked hard to turn out another elegant, timeless piece of automotive design. Well, here it is. At least you won't lose it in the car park. We are back! The world's number one clean energy and electric vehicle live show. Featuring all your favourite things, like tons of test drives, live theatre sessions, interactive home energy experiences, all manner of electric vehicles, and the always popular Kid Zone. Get your tickets now! Now then, good people of Fully Charged, I know what you're thinking right now, because I know you guys, I know what you're like. And right now, you're sat there thinking to yourself, oh great, yet another enormous, excessive, expensive electric SUV. Why should I care about that unless I either play for or own a football team? Well, firstly, let me quickly correct you. This is not another enormous, excessive electric SUV. This is the enormous excessive electric SUV. This thing is nearly five meters long. It's almost two meters wide. If a Mercedes EQC or a Jaguar I-Pace or a Audi e-tron saw one of these arriving, it would do a little wee and run away scared. This car is festooned with technology and gadgets straight off the Starship Enterprise. It starts at 72 and a half thousand pounds. This is the daddy of the big posh electric SUV. By the way, it starts at 72 and a half thousand pounds, but this one I'm in, this one costs a little bit more. Yeah, this is the range topping X-Drive 50 with just about every option on the options list ticked. And as such, this car that I'm in right now is 115,000 pounds. So why should you care? Why should you care about this car? I mean, unless your first name is Shake, chances are it's out of your price range. Well, I'm not so much interested in the car as I am the bones, because you see, this car debuts all new bespoke electric architecture. This is a ground up electric BMW. And while this platform is actually not going to be recycled on any subsequent models, which I do find a bit strange, it's nonetheless going to give us some really useful insights as, as to what we can expect for the next generation of electric BMWs. If the bones of this car are good, it bodes well for the future. And likewise, this car debuts a multitude of new technology and safety features never before seen on a BMW, many of which are going to trickle down to smaller, cheaper BMW models, and we get a first glimpse of them right here. You can sort of think of the iX's relationship to subsequent electric BMWs, like high fashion's relationship to high street fashion. It's an extreme version of something you may end up buying one day. And that's a really good analogy, because much like high fashion, this car is very challenging to look at. In fact, I think it's probably time that we pull over and discuss that face.
Right, this. Let's talk about this. I, you know, beauty is a subjective thing. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions on stuff. All I can say for sure is that I, and every single person that I've shown this car to, think that it's hideous. I showed this car to my housemate yesterday and out loud he went, oh, I'm not joking. That was a genuine reaction. I, I, I can't quite understand how a team of professional car designers sat around a table in an office and looked at that and went, that's what we were going for. And I've had to think about it. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes, trying to understand the, the mindset. And here's my theory, here's what I've come up with. I think that this is the ultimate tailgating machine. All right, think about it. Very flat nose, you can get right up the jack seat of the car in front. And then when they see you in their rear view mirrors, they're gonna scream and get out of the way. And off you go, it's genius. Anyway, I'm gonna stop roasting the car before BMW blacklist me and show you around some of the features on the exterior of this car. There are a lot of features to talk about. We'll begin with the face, the grill. You notice the grill, it's there in case you hadn't uh, spotted it. Obviously electric car doesn't need a grill, but it's a BMW staple, the kidney grill, so it remains. And now it's just housing lots of sensors. That's pretty standard for an electric car. But what I do like is that these grills are allegedly self-healing self-healing there's a polyurethane cover coating these two grills and all the sensors and if it gets a little ding or a scratch or a stone chip when exposed to direct sunlight it'll heal itself there you go this is fun too bmw badge jet washer fluid entrance because you can't get the front open that's how you do that this car is equipped with the m sport package that gives it certain design tweaks and features these kind of triangular pieces here you only get that on the m sport car the non m sport car somehow even blobbier and i will say this i think this car is a lot better not in black so that you can see some of the kind of accent pieces it's a bit of a shapeless blob when it's all one color anyway i'm going to stop being mean about it i said that i would let's come around the side First thing you notice when you get around here, it's absolutely huge, isn't it? It's a massive, massive car, as I mentioned. Very nearly five meters long, just shy of two meters wide. It's got almost exactly the same footprint as a Porsche Taycan. Big, big car. It feels enormous when you're driving it in a city. If you're looking for a new sort of grocery getter, city runabout, this ain't the car for you. I know that sounds obvious, but people do do the school run in Range Rovers, don't they? So you never know. 22 inch wheels on this M Sport car, 20s are standard, 22. Look how small 22 inch wheels look on this car. That gives you some context for how huge this thing is. Coming around the side, it's gonna take me a while to get back here. Ah. The rear three quarters, for me, this car's best angle. That's not saying an awful lot, but I do think it's quite smart from the back. I quite like these super skinny tail lights. I also really like the way they kind of gently illuminate as you approach the car. It's all the rage for cars to have cool light signatures when you unlock them these days. And last thing worth noting back here, the boot. We'll talk about the boot. 500 liters, surprisingly not that huge given the size of the car. I mean, keep in mind this is a bespoke EV bespoke EVs famously even bigger on the inside than they look on the outside well this car's huge on the outside I'm fully expecting there to be a sort of ensuite bedroom in the back seat somewhere but the boots a tad underwhelming at 500 liters if you put the rear seats down it goes up to like 1500 and something and then you've got a lot of space but yeah big enough not the biggest in class Right then, the cabin of the BMW iX. Let's start with this. I've thought long and hard about this. I'm gonna choose my words very carefully. I think this is the most exquisite cabin of any electric car on sale today. I really do. I spent a week with it and that's how I feel. It feels more special than something like a Taycan or an e-tron GT. It's more functional than the Mercedes EQS and it's about a hundred times higher quality than any Tesla model. It is exquisite in here. And what I really love, it's a bit weird and funky. This really feels like a spiritual successor to the i3. It's a bit weird in here. Look at the shape 
of this of this dash piece. Look at this curious design and the shape of the inside of the doors. Look at these bejeweled switches for my seat adjustments and for the infotainment down here. Look at this piece of wood that's got touchscreen haptic buttons in. Look at the shape of this steering wheel. It's a hexagon. It, it, it's not perfect, don't get me wrong. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to hold it and I sort of wish that these were individual buttons and if I'm being very honest, this is a bit Claire's accessories for me, but I like that they've gotten strange with it. It's just got so much more personality than something like the iX3, which just looks like every other BMW model to me. The next thing you notice is the quality. Oh my goodness, this leather, I wish there was some way that you could feel what I'm feeling right now. It is ridiculously soft. And there's a little plant symbol on the dash here, which I thought for a second meant vegan leather, which would have been incredibly impressive. No, it's sort of olive oil, Hand. I forget the process, but it's slightly more sustainable, but make no mistake, an entire herd of cows uh, met their end in order for this interior to be how it looks today, but my goodness, it feels good. And just the solidity of everything, even the indicator stalk has just got this reassuring heft to it. It's, it's so beautifully put together. Now there are many, many posh features on this top spec iX. Too many to name in one video, all the different sorts of posh things that you'd expect from a car at this price point, but there's one that I just have to single out. This car of course has heated and cooled and massage seats. Only the driver's seat is massaged though. This passenger just has to sit there and watch you receive a massage. But the thing I really like about the heated seats, it's not just the seat, this, this is heated. This is heated. That is unbelievably luxury. I, I can't tell you how special you feel leaning on your heated armrest, slightly higher than everyone else on the road, cruising along the motorway. Delightful. A reminder that electric noise you're hearing that was composed by Hans Zimmer. I think he's absolutely fleeced them, however much they paid him. He sat down in front of the piano and gone, uh, there you go, there's one. But it sounds great. It's my favorite synthetic electric sound of any car brand so far. It's just very atmospheric. Ooh. And it sounds even better coming out of this really posh sound system. It's funny how things like that make a difference now in this electric world. The better your speakers, the better your car sounds. Now they're out on the road in the BMW iX, and let's begin with a completely pointless observation. It's really fast. Ooh. Oh, I was not expecting that. 523 brake horsepower, 546 pound-feet of torque, not to 64.6 seconds. That doesn't sound that fast, but when you are in a mansion on wheels, you just don't expect it. Oh, it keeps going. And brakes, 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 brakes. The brakes are good. That's a relief. Whew. There is no need for this car to be that fast. Unnecessary. The craziest thing is this isn't even the fastest one. There's going to be an X-Drive M60, sort of M Sport version with even more power. Don't bother. Don't bother. Probably don't even bother with this one. I think the entry level car is probably the one to go for, unless you need that extra huge range. It's probably more than enough. Here's what I've noticed with this car. There's an overarching sense when you're driving it that a lot of very clever things are happening behind the scenes, almost without you realizing. I'll give you two examples. Number one, the regenerative braking. Now, this car has adjustable regen braking, which as you know, I'm a fan of. Generally speaking, I just drive with the regen on max, super strong, one pedal. That's how I like it in electric cars. Not with this one, because this car has an automatic setting for its regenerative braking, and it is genius. It's looking at the road conditions ahead. It's looking at the traffic ahead. It's looking at the maps, and it's deciding based on that when to apply the regenerative brakes and when not to. So if there's clear road ahead, it'll just coast. But if you're approaching a sharp corner or if there's a car in front of you, it'll apply the regenerative braking a bit stronger. It sounds unnerving, I know. It sounds weird and unpredictable, but it, it works so well. And it means that you get the absolute most out of that gigantic battery pack because even in city driving, you get to do a little bit of coasting, 
and then you use those regen brakes only when you need them. It's, it's a bit spooky at first, but it just works so well. It's very impressive. Another example of this, and I'm slightly risking it with this one because I'm 90% sure that this is a feature and there's a 10% chance that there's just a button somewhere that I can't find, but I'm gonna go with it. You know, when it comes to cruise control, you can adjust your distance to the car in front. I can't see any way of doing that with this cruise control. And I'm pretty sure the car just decides for you based on the road speed, which makes plenty of sense, right? When you're using cruise control down a 30, 40 mile an hour road, you can pull a bit closer to the car in front when you're on the motorway, you wanna stay a safe distance away. I don't need to flip a little switch to decide how many meters away I am from the car in front. The car just knows and it does it for me. I think, I'm pretty sure, if it is a feature, it's a really good one. Let's have a chat about this operating system. This is iDrive 8, the latest and greatest version of BMW software. Now, I really liked the old version that I used in the iX3, but this is a league above. It looks beautiful. It's clear and easy to understand. I can touch the screen if I want to, or I can just use this rotary dial down here, which is how I prefer to do things. This just makes sense to me. The Mercedes monster hyper screen, it looks very, very nice, but a nice clear display and the physical control that's how that's how I like it that just makes more sense to my brain climate menu is buried away but it's pretty intuitive and look how responsive this is look how quickly look how quickly the screen responds you just don't see that on anything other than iPhones and Teslas frankly I don't know why infotainment systems seem to be 10 years behind everything else in terms of responsiveness but BMW not so this is just a very impressive interior. And the good news is we're going to see a lot of this in future electric BMWs. This iDrive 8 system, this will trickle down to the next generation. Other things that I'm really hoping to see trickle down to other electric BMWs, just the general funkiness of this design. BMW is better when it's funky. The i3 proved that and this is further proof. One last feature before we jump in the back. We've got to talk about this sunroof. This is an electrochromatic sunroof. What does that mean? I'm not quite sure, but the bottom line is, instead of some tacky plastic cover for when it's a bit sunny out and you're getting a bit hot, no, you just push this button here and the glass turns cloudy. Oh! And the ride is just, I mean, opulent. I'm sat here cocooned by only the softest, most supple leather. Very, very high driving position, but a good driving position. Really adjustable. Look how far out I've got the steering wheel to accommodate for my big lanky legs. I'm exactly how I want to be sat, cushioned in these enormous squashy seats. Here's one complaint. This little plastic square in the seat here, if you're tall, digs into the top of your back. Not, not, not a huge fan of that, also not sure why it's there, but a small gripe. Downsides of this car, look, this design is unusual. I'm talking about the interior. It's not gonna be for everyone. The exterior is for absolutely no one, as far as I can tell. It is insanely massive. I think on principle, I have to take issue with how huge this car is, because in this new electric world where we're trying to be kind of frugal and just take what we need the idea that anyone needs to purchase a hundred and fifteen thousand pound five meter long suv is a bit baffling but it is a very nice one You know what time it is, backseat jack test. Now, keeping in mind, this vehicle is 90 meters long and sits on bespoke EV architecture. If there's anything other than a living room worth of legroom and headroom, this car has failed. Let's see. I mean, that's just so much room. This is seat, this seat is in my driving position way, way back and I've got tons of space. My God, these seats are so comfy. They're so comfy. And I've got dual 
USB-C ports in the back of the seat here. I've got this delightful, gigantic sunroof to look out of. It's so bright and airy. I don't know what's going on with these holes in the seat. Is this so you can sort of blow on the neck of the driver while they're driving to make them feel uncomfortable? I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Let's move on very swiftly. Can you pan down here, cameraman Louis? I want to talk about this. This is quite interesting. This is a carbon fiber reinforced plastic and much of the sort of exoskeleton of the car is made using this material and other innovative and lightweight materials. The name of the game here is lightness and stiffness. It's designed to help the car handle better and keep the weight down. And that's why this car only weighs as much as the moon. I think it's a very, very impressive vehicle. You're entitled to your own opinions about ostentatious £100,000 electric SUVs. I certainly have my own, but you can't deny they've nailed the brief. It is luxurious, it's fast, it's exquisite, it's comfortable, it's beautifully made, it's really quite good to drive and it's got all the range in the world. If you're looking for a big unit of a car that just does everything and makes people go, oh God, when you arrive places, well, it's in a category of one. I will say this, this X-Drive 50 version it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. Yes, you get lots of lovely toys and a huge amount of range, but 40 grand price hike from the base car, 40 grand. Tough to justify. I mean, the base car is gonna be quick enough and it's still got 250 miles of range. I would say that that's probably the one to go for. And for me, it's the new best posh electric SUV. It's the best. Yes, it's still 10 grand more than an I-Pace or an EQC or an iX3, but let's be honest, if you're in the market for this sort of car, you can probably afford it. Concluding thoughts on the iX then, by the way, I should clarify, this is not a deliberate cool guy pose, it's just very windy, so this is the only shelter we can find. Here's the bottom line with this car. Beyond that hideous face is a very, very impressive machine. And if you are in the market for a ridiculously expensive, absolutely enormous, luxurious electric car, this is one of the very best ones. But again, I'm more interested in what this car tells us about future electric BMWs. And it's good news. The bones of this car are very good. The platform is excellent. The new iDrive system is fantastic. The cabin design is wonderful. So many of the new tech features, so impressive. This bodes well for the electric BMWs of tomorrow. But if I'm being honest, I'm still a bit worried about BMW because the truth is the electric BMWs of tomorrow are still quite a ways away. We're not getting a bespoke electric 3 Series, aka the one we really want, until 2025. The i4 that's coming out soon, that's based on ICE architecture. The next electric thing we get after that is the 7 Series, another big, luxurious, expensive car. It still just feels a little bit like BMW aren't taking this quite as seriously as they should be. And all this dilly-dallying, it's just buying more time for brands like Kia and Hyundai to extend their advantage. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that there's a master plan at work here that I'm not seeing because frankly, I love BMW. And this car shows us just how wonderful bespoke electric BMWs could be. So there we have it, the iX, a polarizing vehicle, but a very interesting one. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Jack. I mean, everyone enjoys episodes with Jack. Jack's marvelous. No, Jack's young, Jack's tall, Jack's got loads of hair. I hate Jack. Anyway, here's another episode that Jack did. It's absolutely brilliant. Here's our latest episode. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged to get more Jack. And there, you can support Jack on Patreon.